So are you tired of feeling like the enemy is always winning in your life? Well, Jason Lozano talks about how God can break the grip of hell over your life. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. So what does it take to break the power of hell over your life? And can you experience true freedom? Well, with the help of our special guest, you're going to hear firsthand what God did in his life, what he can do in your life, and how he's going to share this story with all of us today. But first joining me around the table is April Simons. How are you? I'm doing great. Life-changing testimonies it are always is. good. Anybody watching, if they feel hopeless after hearing this, they're not going to feel hopeless. There's always hope. And, yeah. you know, hope has a name, and it's Jesus. That's you can right. Help anybody. That's right. And the message is true in that we have witnessed how many testimonies around this table oh, so many. of changed lives. Yes. So People encouraging. who wanted to give up on life and give up on their purpose and give yes. up on everything. And that's why you need to keep watching. Yep. Because uh, the Lord's going to speak to you through this testimony today that He's not through with you. Yep. He's that's not true. through with you, Dorothy. That's right. Hello. How are you? I'm good, good. How are the grandbabies? I always doing have to really ask. Good. Doing really good. She has um, a girl and a boy. Yes, Aww. yes, four months and a year old, and they are just growing <laughs> precious. I never, ever dreamed of what it would be like. It's the most beautiful thing mm -hmm. on earth. Rachel Ann Brown, my daughter, how are you? I'm good. I'm eight months out from having a baby. Now, little right. Noah is crawling everywhere. <laughs> yes, but he's army he crawling. Really? So we're working well, he's on army proper crawling. crawling. Army crawling. Let him army crawl. Yeah. Let's Let him army okay. crawl. Yeah. It's okay. It's and a Kindle. Yes, Joni. Do you remember the days when your son was young crawling oh, I around? Do, yeah. I do. I do. I do. I remember all those days. But you know, April and I were talking about being a grandmother. Yeah. And there is something so different about grandparenting, yeah. and there's no way you can know it until you've experienced it. So it's true. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm doing great. I actually got an amazing shot of joy and all of that being with the You got to be with your family recently and yes. be with the grandbabies yeah. and, and the and grandkids. I, I get and rejuvenated, excited. You do. It carries me for a little longer till I see him again. That's right. <laughs> That's right, for sure. Well, he is the founder and pastor of Freedom City Church, and he's here to talk about the messages from his book, Let My People Go. Please welcome our dear friend, Pastor Jason Lozano. Here he comes. Yeah. Yeah. I love that introduction. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. How are you doing? Special. Great. Are you? Yes, you know yes, what? Yes. You know when you meet Jason, he's such a sweet, mm -hmm. yes. gentle, <laughs> yes, kind yes. spirit. Yes. This is a transformed person, mm -hmm. y'all. When you yes. hear about what he used to do and who he is today, mm. only God, only God. You know the Bible says that the gates of hell will not be able to stand against those whose hope and faith yes. rest in the revelation of Jesus Christ. But what does that look like? Well, Jason experienced this truth in his own life, and he's here to tell us how God brought him freedom and is doing the same for people all over Los Angeles and beyond because he has a great church there in Los Angeles. But uh, welcome back to the table. Yes, I love good this table. You all you beautiful ladies. It's always so good to see you. I've been watching, you. she came up on my YouTube channel, so my wife been watching you on your YouTube channel. So. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Well, um, let's just go back to the beginning. Okay. Uh, you were born. Into a home. <laughs> you were born. Yes. Well, and with I was the... born into a, a normal home at first, and then my dad uh, um, went off to the war, mm -hmm. and like so many young men did, he he uh, he, he saw things probably, you know, war is bad. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yes. So it he over there um, was asked to do things, and something happened to him because he came back addicted, and he didn't come back the same. Very but, traumatized. Yes. Yeah. Like, by what he saw. Yeah. Because yeah. people, like when you say people, you have a drug problem, have an alcohol mm -hmm. problem, a lot of times that's an addiction that they have attached to to keep from feeling the pain of something mm -hmm. that they went through. Well, it's, it's usually a symptom. Yes. It's a symptom. Yeah, it's a symptom. A problem. That's, it's a symptom. Um, yeah. And so, and that symptom, it, it, it separated them, my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. So then... I would go to my dad's house on the weekends, and then I'd go 
to, I was with my mom all week going to school, and my dad, you know, he, he was it was wild over there. So I liked to go. It was like a ranch living, and <laughs> so it, I liked it. It was wild. We were little kids running around, and then um, on the weekends, and then on the weekdays, I'd go home. But one weekend around Christmas time, my dad dropped me off, and with all these presents, and told me, "I'll see you next week, son." And so I waited the next week. My little backpack were ready to go, but he never showed up. Not ever. I'm 49. So wow. how devastating was that for you? It 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 uh even today it brings up emotion. Sure. But not because it's like sad, it's just God's the father. Mm. But I just it, it's so devastating, I'd never want anyone to go through that. Yes. Because everybody should have a, a dad. You know, that's it took your hope away. Yeah, it, it was hopeless. And then as a child, what, how do you process that? And how old were yeah. you at that point? Seven. You were seven. Oh, no. Okay. okay, so then your mom remarries. Yeah. And no, she didn't remarry. Okay. She lived with the man for 17 years. Oh, wow. And he he uh, was very, very abusive. Mm. Um, extremely to her mm. and to us. And it mainly me, because I think I reminded him of my dad. Mm. So he targeted me. Why do you think she stayed with him for so long? Fear. Of being fear. alone. Of fear of being you. alone. And then he would put, like, when she wanted to go to church, he would put a 357 Magnum in her mouth and say, I'll blow your head off. Because she was he was afraid she would meet a man. But his fear came upon him because she did go to church and she did meet a man. <laughs> <laughs> but the reality was he was psycho. He was psychotic. He would yes. burn, like, he would get cigars and burn cigars in his arms. Did you see all this? Yes. It was traumatic. And he would shoot the gun off in the middle of the night. Every Christmas, it wasn't normal. Man, every Christmas was never normal. Like, he would just get the Christmas tree and throw it outside, and we'd have to be out there picking up all the little ornaments. I mean, that's, that's mm -hmm. as a kid, wow. you know, you're not supposed to see that. And then no. every Thanksgiving, he'd break all the china. And, and it was just like holes in the wall. It was a madness. It was, a, it was, like, a, it was like a madness. Crazy making. It was crazy. And he was a big man, so... It, it, it it made me like uh, fearless, kind of like if I if I can survive this guy, mm, everyone yeah, else is yeah. like nothing. So, so how old were you? I guess when you kind of struck out on your own to do your own thing and got involved in a lot of stuff. You I was always have. a good kid because my mom knew God, so she always like taught us about God. And my grandma was a Christian, so she'd take us to church when I was a little kid. And then the bus would come, like the bus ministry, and they mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. they pick us up and they take us to the church. So I knew the Lord, but then I, when I was in junior high. I was always troubled, but I was always like, I knew the Lord, you know, I was a good kid. But then at, at 12, I turned my back on the Lord and I made a decision to do that. And it was the worst decision of my life. And so what did you get involved in? I got involved, well, like entry drugs, you know, just like marijuana and all that. And then it went from there to full on meth and then dealing and then manufacturing and then and then. So uh, you got into the whole business, yeah. manufacturing and dealing yeah, and I, using. I was, part of making methamphetamine, which makes you evil. At a young age. Yeah, because you, yes. you, you can't make meth unless you lock yourself in a room. Mm -hmm. While you're in that room, you're the source, like you're the source of blessing, you're the source of evil. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, that's where I got demon possessed. And you actually um, got caught and went to prison. Um, when, I was a, and when I was a teenager, I was sh uh, shipped off at, at uh, 14 wow. to youth correctional. Um, and then in and out of jail all from then on. So it, it was like a seven-year period. You were just a mess. Like fully demon-possessed. Did, did jail not deter you from wanting did, to continue? Jail was the worst thing for me. Yeah. Because I wasn't a hardened criminal. So even though I was raised in abuse, my stepdad wasn't gangster. Yeah. He was just abusive. But in jail... You met the gangsters. And, and you can't survive, like, without being... Yeah. A gangster. So I'm in there, hey, dude. And they're like, hey, dude. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I switch, like, orale. I start, my, every, everything changed. And that spirit, that, that, and it's a spirit, that gangster spirit jumped, it, it, and it just changed me. Yeah. And it changed my voice, my vocabulary. It created a, a fake personality. To survive. To survive. But then I liked it because it was power. Wow. Okay, so you, um, I don't want to stay there because we want to get you saved. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, um, yeah. so, it's all in the book. <laughs> yeah, so it's all in the book. All it's the, funny, too. It's got a lot of funny stories. All the but. details. All the details. But your mother, um, actually, you talked about how she met a really nice man. 
and they yeah, they yeah. started serving so the Lord together. My mom, she got married. She tried to break away from him, my stepfather. Well, he wasn't my stepdad, but you know, he raised us yes. a lot of times. But he would always it was like it was awful because he'd find us, and then it was like this ugly feeling when he'd come back. Mm -hmm. And finally, she broke away. Like she she like relocated. He never knew where where we were, mm -hmm. and then she started going to a church. Well, that's where she met what we know as Pastor Dwayne. He's my dad. I don't believe in stepdads. You either are or you're not. You're going to take care of me or not. <laughs> so uh, he, they started going to Bible college and serving God. He was good. He, was, he's a, he is good. He was good, <laughs> is good, and forever will be good. Yes. <laughs> he's amazing. Like, wow. He's oh. Pastor Dwayne. He's one of our pastors, oh. and everyone loves so him. Happy for your mom, yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And if you see her, she's like different. She's like... She was older looking back then. Yeah. The, 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 she's beautiful. I think we yeah. got a picture we can yeah. show you. She's beautiful. Okay, so... Um, so then she's... She remarries. Yeah, so they're getting the word. They're learning the word. And the pastor teaches this lesson. If you have a problem, find a promise. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a problem. <laughs> That's an easy identifier. And then that the promise. That was Jason was the, was the and, problem. And my, my sister was on methamphetamine. Oh, wow. Yeah. On my methamphetamine. And my brother was on crack cocaine, which is oh horrible. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, it is a nightmare. And this is why condemnation has to be broken off people mm -hmm. that are believing God. Because yes. if people have made mistakes as parents or in any area, you can't believe God with a condemned heart. That's yeah. right. So I remember my mom there standing on the word. And th this is when something broke in me. She looked at me with love and sincerity and kindness, but it was powerful. She said, son... I got over it. You need to get over it, too. Mm, wow. And, and I knew my life's over. The, <laughs> this criminal is... Because for whatever reason, that little... It, that statement just broke something off me. Like, mm -hmm. uh-oh, I can't control her anymore. Mm -hmm. I can't manipulate this thing. Mm. She's free. Yeah. My mom's free. And she started declaring that word every single yeah. morning and you at night. You saw the power. Yeah. I felt the power. It would wow. go through the door. When they'd, <laughs> they'd put their hands on the door, it, it, would, it was a, like a smoke would come under the door. I could see it because I was in the spirit. It wasn't the Holy Spirit, yeah. but I was in the spirit. And that smoke would come under the door like that. And I knew if that thing touches me, it's going to weaken me. So I'd jump out the window. Wow. wow. Okay, so there came an event that she invited you to. Yes. Tell us about okay, what happened. Okay, so that Carmen concert. Carmen concert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some of you don't know who Carmen is. Yeah, he's you, with the Lord okay. now. But he's he with the Lord, and I'm yes. gonna, when I get to heaven, all the people that go, he's going to get rewarded for that. Yes. When, when yes. I, I get people Say, saved. Who yeah. Is oh, house? no. So <laughs> my mom doesn't tell me it's Carmen because she's like, you know, she knows I won't go mm -hmm. if it's a Christian concert. So she, I just say, Mom, is there going to be a lot of lights? She says, a lot of lights, son. So I, I took wow, some music. I took acid, had this wild girl with me. We went <laughs> all on acid. <laughs> And we're there. Oh, no. And I'm having a good time. I yeah, she, yeah. she didn't lie. It was a concert with lights. But then, man, the pot, the father, the love of the father, just liquid love. And that was it. And I, and I sobered up. You is, felt the love of God. You I, felt the tangible I felt presence yes. of God. the love of the father, God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Abba, daddy, papa. I didn't have that. I was looking for that. You know, they say looking for love in all the wrong places. Yeah. That was like the epitome of, of my problem. Mm -hmm. And then I just was like drawing me and I just ran. They, I don't remember everything. The only because like a haze. Because mm -hmm. I don't remember a lot from those days. Yeah. Um, but I got out of my chair, they said, and I ran. <laughs> and I gave my life to the Lord that day. And then they took me in the back and these ladies, these little white haired ladies just jumped me. Pray for you. <laughs> Shondo me. <laughs> they prayed. For you. They got all this stuff they off me. They cast any bad spirits out. They got a lot of them. Yeah, power <laughs> prayer. Yeah, wow. they didn't get all of them, but they they, were, they got enough to where I can. I was able to start. There's like, something about uh, the arresting presence of God Jeez. that even as we sit here and you tell your story, we can yeah. sense the presence of God here, and and I know that you can sense the presence of God. Those of you that are watching right now, and uh, you got to move when God moves. And so, Jason, I want you to just look into the camera and just uh, pray the sinner's prayer with someone. Lead someone to Jesus. We'll repeat it after you and right. give people watching an opportunity. Right now, some of you watching, you sense the presence of God so strong and the Lord is calling your name. I mean, you have been looking, you have been searching and God is calling your name. Jason? If you're there, just 
say, the, open your heart. Yes. You want to put your hand on your heart? I like to, mm -hmm. that's, that's special. Mm -hmm. Locate your heart and just say, dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord, dear Lord Jesus. Jesus. I believe. I believe. You're the Son of God. You're the Son of God. And that you died on the cross. You died on the cross. For my sins. For my sins. And have mercy on me. And have mercy on me. And I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. 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 Amen. You know, I shared this earlier because I love this part, especially for people who are watching, said, I've been praying for a son or a daughter or a family member, <laughs> or, or even maybe you've prayed yourself and you still have things hanging on that you know probably aren't from God that you're doing. Um, I just want to encourage you um, that it's a process and God is working in your life. And I'm, I really encourage you to get in a good Bible believing church full of the Holy Spirit and get, get a Bible that you can read and surround yourself with the right kind of people, your life is going to dramatically change. I know for you, Jason, that next step um, after you were saved, what's funny is you went and partied after he got <laughs> saved. Did you he celebrate. He was so excited. Well, he didn't know anything. I was excited. I was so excited. I felt like I won the lottery. So I was like, well, I'll bring the keg, the girls, the beers, the drugs. And we partied like rock stars for two weeks. And it was like a block party. Did you say, I got saved. We're going to celebrate. Yeah, and so they say, why are we celebrating? Jason's saved now. They didn't but no, know what they Nobody knew what they meant. We just know it was getting high. And then about two weeks later is where... It, it, like remember when Moses was on the mountain and he and he mm -hmm. was and he was full of the glory and then it faded mm -hmm. and so it was like fading and that fading got me nervous mm -hmm. it because it, 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 I didn't know where to get more of it. It's kind of like David, you know, when he said he knew he had sinned. Yeah, and he and he repented. And he said, "Please don't take your holy that, spirit and, away." And from I felt it son. leaving, mm -hmm. and I got so scared, and because uh, well, oh my God, that's. I mean, I was saved, you know? So my, that's when my mom approached me. She said, you know, you're struggling, she tells me. <laughs> it's like, it was the weirdest thing. It's never happened to me since ever. My spirit spoke, and it bypassed my mind. Wow. Yeah, because she said, you're struggling. And I said, and my mind's like, don't say nothing. What are you doing? Because I trained myself to lie. Yeah. And it's like, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And you want to go to like a, 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 a recovery program. And I was like, Yes, <laughs> are you gonna go right now? I was like, yeah, and you'll, you'll sleep. I was, no, I was a prideful person. You'll sleep on the floor, like on the floor. Yes, and I was in the home that day. You wow. were in the home that day, and that God, night, God set you up. And this is yes. the thing about when you yes. really open your heart to truth and receiving the Lord, God will open doors supernaturally. He'll send people across your path. He'll make things happen that you're thinking, was this a coincidence? It's no coincidence. Mm -hmm. And when you got to this. Uh, well, even before that was wild, I was had a little bit of drugs left, so I said, I might as well smoke the rest of it, because that's all I... <laughs> Can't I, I, I got at least 30 days, I'm going to have to be sober. So I said 30 days. So I'm doing getting high, and I heard the audible voice of God. And he told me, mijo, enough is enough. And I kept getting high. People, oh, it was the drugs. I did drugs every day, all day. Then God never spoke to me. That was the voice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he spoke to me over and over. And I kept getting high because I was going to finish. Over As I was packing, he kept speaking to me. And that was the last day I ever did drugs. Wow. I went into the program. And lo and behold, two of my best friends, I thought one was dead, were in that program out of all the programs in the world. And it's out of the city because it was the Lord and, and me. <laughs> And it was like... And they had been really messed up. I thought he was dead, one of them. But the thing was, he looked... When I saw my friend Billy Enriquez, he looked like an angel. He was, like, mm. healthy, and, mm. and he... I, I'd never seen Billy look like that. And just seeing him changed me. Seeing him, like, the way he was made me go, whoa. That had to make hope spring I alive. Like hope. Yes. Whoa. If, if, wow. if Billy can make it and Robert can make it, Maybe I could. Now, I wasn't planning on serving the Lord like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was planning, in my mind, 30 days. Yeah. And what did, what did it turn into? 60 days, 90 days, five years, 31 <laughs> years later. What was the 30 years later. Five, five years later, but the discipleship. Five years straight. Was so important. 
Because oh. during that time, you went to Bible school, oh, you learned yes. to read, you learned to write. God did so many supernatural things preparing you <sighs> for what you're doing today. Talk a little bit about that. It's amazing. Um, that was a journey. Mm -hmm. That was a journey. To learn how to read and write again, speak again, that was a journey. Because people don't realize, you know, sometimes they call them dual personalities, and, mm -hmm. um, things like this. Mm -hmm. But the truth was, it was a demon that gave me a personality. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to say everyone's like that. I just, that was my case. Mm -hmm. So I had this um, gangster persona. And when that evil spirit left, it, 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 it was like the Little Mermaid. You know Ursula? <laughs> you remember say she, <laughs> Ursula takes the voice. Yeah. It took my ability to speak, to talk, to be around um, nice people like you. I couldn't. Mm. I was just weird. Mm. And even my pastor, he dealt with a lot of messed up people. But he goes, he goes, this guy, I don't think he's going to make it. And I wouldn't have. But people love me enough to take me in their home and, wow. mm. and raise me as their own and and then I had my Bible, and I would just read it. Mm. And I got my mind back, and I got my ability to talk back, and it just changed everything. Supernatural power. It was a supernatural power of God, and it changed my whole life. Oh, wow. It changed your whole life. And, and that's why I want to help people. That's why we wrote yes. the book. That's, that's what it's about. Well, that's why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, we talk yes. about 20-something years later, so great nice. church. Thousands of people have been set free. Yes. And you can understand better than anyone about addiction and what it did to your life. Yeah. Talk to that person right now. I don't even think it's just addiction. It was brokenness. Talk to yes. that broken person yes. right it, now. It's Pastor. like um, the Bible says the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Yes, yes. And it literally means to be shattered by grief. Mm -hmm. People go through loss. They get shattered. They go through fatherlessness. They go through traumatic stuff. Uh, my sister was abused. She, it's just these things come, and they're from the devil to break us. Mm -hmm. And when That's your heart's so broken, it's if you look at it in the Webster's, it's your spirit, it says. It's your spirit's broken, and no man can put your spirit back together. So Only true. God, because he That's made right. your spirit. And God, if you give him the broken pieces of your heart, he, he's the only one that can put it back together. No man can do it. Only God. Therapists are amazing. Christian counselors, I believe in all of it. But they're used by God. In the end of the day, it's God that yes, can heal yes, the broken yes. heart. And if your heart is broken, just understand if you give it to God, he'll put your life back together. And you'll take what the devil meant for your evil and somehow, some way, yeah. he'll turn it all around yes. for the good yes. and make you a blessing. Yes. To and the that's nations. What, that's what he did for you. And yes. um, he called you to pastor. Oh, man, that was funny. <laughs> you did not want to do it. No, you kidding me? <laughs> Pastoring's rough. It's hard on the soul. It's a, <laughs> and I saw my pastor, like, help all these people. And then they, like, Stab him in the back. Hit the church and talk about him. Like, this guy <laughs> loves you. Bad. He preaches. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, I'm out. Yeah. And I knew, I, I, I recognize it now, it was like an orphan spirit, like a root of rejection, because I didn't want to get hurt anymore. So yeah. as an evangelist, which I love, you can go in, you can minister, and then kind of get out, and you don't have to, like, necessarily you, you get beat up by everybody. You don't have to live yeah. with them. Right? So, but the Lord, I was in a season where I was just like, Holy Spirit, what's wrong? Something's wrong. And so I sought the Lord in fasting for a couple days, and in that space that's when the uh, the voice of the lord came to me he said i heard the cries of the people mm. of whittier of los angeles and i'm going to send you to the pharaoh of whittier mm. to tell him to let my people go you know what's interesting it wasn't to the pharaoh of whittier yeah. to the pharaoh of los angeles yes. let yes. our to the, people to the pharaoh go. of america to the pharaoh mm. of the nation Amen. yes yes Oof. yeah Ooh. come on <laughs> mm. so good you said yes and I said, finally, yeah, well, when he spoke to me, I said, cause I, I don't ever want to hurt the Lord. Like, you know, like, okay, whatever you want. When it comes to that, it's like, we're not, whatever you need, you know, mm. there's no arguing. So he said it and I said, okay, of course I will. I said, so you want me to die for you then? I will. I didn't know you wanted me to die for you. He's like, cause they want to kill me in the city. The, the gangs, um, they had to put a contract on my life. So. I said, okay. And he's like, no, no, they're all, everyone that was after your life is dead. I'm going to protect you because mm. of their lifestyle. Yeah. And I, he protected me when I went back. And, um, and we started with eight people um, in, in my house. And then we, um, then we did a little tiny little art lounge and little by little started growing. And then 
And I, I started church at 2 o'clock in the afternoon because I go, all the people I know won't go to church at no 10 o'clock. <laughs> so I started going to the nightclub. And started evangelizing, and everyone's buzzed and drunk, and I was all like, hey, come to church. I'll give you soup, menudo, it's Spanish soup. Menudo, and I asked Advil, just come. No, no, you know, just come as you are. So they were coming, and, yeah. and it, it was... It was, it was not like a church planning strategy. It, it was the raw power of God, and we just preached, and people were getting, it was wild. And, 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 and it was wild, wild, wild. And God just moved, and it, it hadn't stopped growing. So today, what's going on? Uh, we, we, with, it's thousands of people. We just bought another city block. Wow. wow. That, yeah. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. So and we, how many groups do you have going? We, we have 500 home groups, almost 600 home groups. We have 932 groups a week. We have 160 teachings every Sunday. That's amazing. Uh, we have um, <laughs> thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Um, but the it's name about of the your one. Church it's is about what? the one. What's the name? Freedom of your City Church. Freedom yeah, City it's like revival Church. in LA. Yeah. You know, LA. Freedom but, City yeah. Church. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, guys. It, there was so, so much to tell. Yeah. Yeah. So good. On his but April so quickly. I did, how do you? My favorite saying, it, it, just because you didn't come from a healthy family doesn't mean a healthy family can't come from you. How do you do it, and how can you tell people I, I think they can do you it? Have to be, you have to be strategic. Mm -hmm. So no one taught me how to be a husband. No one taught me how mm -hmm. to be a dad. So I, I'm, I saw my pastor, mm -hmm. and that was the model, the mentor. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. And then I like to read books every day. Like, I read books on health. I read books on marriage. I read books on parenting. Excellent. I, read books I on still love that. Vision, yeah. books on mm. leadership, books on finance, like business. So I believe in education, yeah. like, uh, and, 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 and reading and doing, reading That's and awesome. doing. Well, we are out of time from this incredible story. I want you to know that whatever struggles you're facing, I don't know that you could have ever done any worse than what Jason did, okay? <laughs> so when you see what God did for him, you yes. have to know he's going to do the same for you because he's no respecter of persons. I'm just kidding you, Jason. No, it's true. But, but, I mean, it's true. <laughs> Honestly, the reason the Lord chooses people like that is to get, take away everyone's excuses. Exactly. I'm telling you. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Because we, we, you don't have any excuse. Yeah. Uh, you can experience freedom, mm. and you can experience victory just as Jason has, just as all of us sitting here. God wants to do a delivering work mm. in your life today. That's the presence of God that's sitting on top of you right now as you watch this, because he's saying, I love you. Now just open your heart and receive what I have for you right now. And if you're watching and you're ready for the Lord to break hell off of your life, because some of you have been living in hell, then I want you to call that number on the screen. We, 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 we have wonderful prayer partners that are standing by, ready to pray with you. It's our honor to do so. Write down the number. Call it later if you happen uh, to get a busy signal or you can't get through. Sometimes we just get an entourage of so many calls. But write down the number and let us pray with you, encourage you today. But I do want to thank Jason for sharing his story with us. You definitely want to pick up a copy of his book, Let My People Go. It tells his whole story. It's available now. And for more, you can visit him online at jasonlozano.org. Let us know how today's Table Talk touched your life. Let us know if you prayed that prayer. I want to send you a free book entitled, Now What? What do I do now that I've done this? Because God has so much more for you. And you say, well, there's a lot of darkness. And there's a lot of light coming in on you right now. And I tell you what, the light dispels the darkness. You can always leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, X, or YouTube. And uh, we always love hearing what God is doing in your life. Thank you so much for watching. We love you today. That's why we bring programs like this to you, because we want to encourage you. And we want to see you walk in all that God has for you. And listen, don't lose your hope. God is not through with you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.